Hey guys, welcome to week. Sorry, I'm gonna get some more gold. 80 here on the Real DVD Watchers on Wednesdays. It's me, Tom. Um, the movie that I've chosen to review today is an adaptation of a Clive Barker a short story. But I feel that in order for you to fully understand where I'm coming from, I kind of have to say a little bit what my biggest fear is. Um, you might understand as to how this movie develops and how it's so well put together. When I was seven, I remember going to a, to a new school, and uh, I didn't realize that I had a stuttering problem. And I can totally remember uh, being the, being the new kid, and one kid asked me what was wrong with the way how I talk. Why was I talk talking so funny? And. Uh, I didn't know that I had a speech impediment, so I'm like nothing, and they all made fun of me because of it, and I will always remember that first day of school, and I will always remember everyone laughing at me, and just for me, that's one of my biggest fears, is that one day my stutter will be too far out of my control. But luckily for me, that's not an issue anymore. Well, at least not overly. <laughs> Uh, the movie that I've chosen to review today is Clyde Barker's Dread. Uh, it is a part of the After Dark Film Festival, so right then and there, I know it's going to put a lot of people off, but don't let this, don't let the After Dark thing um, sway your your view of this movie. This movie is absolutely brilliant. Basically, what's going on, going on in this one is about this uh, guy named Stephen, played by Jackson... Uh, Rothbone, who you probably know from the Twilight, Twilight movies, he plays one of the sparklers. He and uh, this guy Quinn, I forget who the hell plays him. Oh, Sean Evans. Um, d decide you know for their for their thesis in their film class that they're gonna make this documentary about the true essence of fear, what people dread. And so they interview all these people, and then Quint just inclines on this whole entire step up. We're not getting what we need to get. We need to be pushing the fear further. We need to be getting true, raw emotions out of this. And just... The other two are like, no, we're getting... Sorry, uh, Jack Jackson and um, Cheryl, played by uh, Haney Stain. Uh, she's just like, no, we're getting exactly what we need. Why would you ever want to do that? Like, we don't want people's lives in danger. And Jack, and not Jackson, um, Quinn is just like, what are you talking about? We're not getting what we need. And so, it's about their friendship kind of deteriorating and um, Stephen falling in love with Cheryl and them playing out. And then, um, and then it's all about Quinn, you know, trying who pretty much has sex with with this girl who's in love with Steven, not Cheryl. I think her name's Abby. And Abby has a birthmark down on the whole left side of her body. And just, Steven rejects her. Not not because she, she has a birthmark, because he's in love with Cheryl, but just she assumes it's because of her birthmark. And so she, so she re, re, rebounds with, um, with Quinn. And just, Quinn is plagued by these nightmares of how his family died. And just he finds the more in depth he goes into people's fear, the less the dreams re re reoccur. So then, you know, it, it just develops into like people taking it to the extreme. With, with Abby, after being like her whole entire body is shown in front of the whole entire school because Quinn just goes and just completely fucks up the um, natural assignment for them. And he, he uh, paints Abby the way how she would look, but just he starts painting over her with black to represent the birthmark. Then he holds up this sign that says, this is how you look. You will never be normal. So she freaks out, and uh, she goes into the bathroom, and she starts pouring bleach over her birthmark and then rubbing herself with steel wool. It's kind of hard to watch, truth be told. I mean, e even though it's not the greatest special effects, it is really hard to watch. Um, I don't want to give away too much of the ending, but the ending just really, it's, it's true Clive Barker in the way how it's done, because he takes it to the next level, but just, it's like, what are you doing? It's, it's truly m malevolent in its style, and just, it's an absolutely tremendous movie. Um, th this movie was written and directed by Anthony, uh, De, De Blasi, um, I'm not sure what else he's done, 
but but he did adapt the script, and Clive is actually is a producer on this, so you know that it ha does have Clive's grace on this. Um, it's just absolutely stunning the way how the visuals look. Like there's such great cinematography in, in this movie. The acting is top notch. It's nice nice to see Jackson Booth actually sorry uh, Jackson uh, Rathbone actually act and not be a fucking sparkler in Twilight because he he actually he actually can act. He's actually a very good actor. So it's kind of sad to see him so subdued with what they do with him. The whole their supporting cast is great. You actually believe these these kids are actually in, in a class together. You know, you, you believe the little romance. You totally believe Abby. And, you know, when, when she's talking about uh, how she fully understood that she had a problem and, and stuff like that. But just definitely check check this out. It is a great movie. If I had to give this movie a rating out of 10, it would definitely get, like, an 8. I'm serious. Like, this movie to totally captivated me. It had me hooked from start to, from start to finish. But I find Clive Barker movies... Uh, nor normally do because Clive has Clive has such a great way of writing such rich stories, and it's great when I always see the people who are working on his films work very closely with Clive to to bring the story about. So for me, it was just everything I ever could have wanted out of a Clive Barker adaptation. So yeah, eight out of ten. Um, so I'll be back next week. Hopefully you guys like this. If not, hey, no worries. Again, the movie Dread. Definitely check it out. Have a good, see you then. Bye.